All right, and I want everyone to actually take a deep breath with me right now. Inhale. What if I told you that one deep breath could save your whole life? Come back with me now to 2008. I'm surfing in Senegal, competing in the West African Surf Championship, and traveling with friends. At this point, my entire life revolves around the water, health, and fitness. And it's how I make my living as a surf instructor and a fitness trainer. On this one particular day, however, I'm paddling out to catch this wave. And as soon as I catch it, I hop up to my feet. And all of a sudden, something goes wrong. Both of my legs actually go completely numb. And I face plant on my board. And I make it back to shore, but I realize that something's not right. I'm having these strange physical symptoms. My muscles are locking up, my joints are getting stiff, and my whole body is inexplicably fatigued. I figured, you know, I've been traveling a long time. When I get home, I'll just rest it off, and then I'll start training for my next gig, which was going to be training for an 18-mile paddle from Montauk to Block Island. Only thing is I never make the paddle. These symptoms actually keep getting worse, and they start to migrate from just these physical symptoms, these joint pains, muscle pains, to include cognitive problems like brain fog and real confusion. Until one day in late September, I wake up, and I actually remember I'm sitting on the edge of my bed, and I'm staring at these spots on the floor. And I could see them just as clear as I'm seeing you now. They were my shoes. But I couldn't, for the life of me, figure out what they were for, let alone how to put them on my feet and actually tie them. That's when I knew I had a real problem. <laughs> what I didn't know at the time was that this was only just the beginning of something that would land me in bed for the next three years. These years that followed immediately after were like an endless barrage of nonstop doctor's appointments, home nurse visits, and literally every test imaginable. Everything from spinal taps to brain MRIs, EKGs, painful nerve conductivity testing. And I got back some pretty scary results like this one here, which was a study done on me by NYU Langone Medical, which basically said cerebral brain perfusion, abnormal perfusion, T2 flared white matter lesions in the cerebral cortex, and gave me a clinical diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. At the same time, <laughs> I got back the results of my spinal tap, which showed Lyme disease. Now, Lyme disease is sometimes easily treatable with a simple course of antibiotics, but if, it le if it's left undetected and it gets into the central nervous system, it can cause a host of these chronic degenerative problems leading to debilitating, sometimes lifelong issues and symptoms like those that I was already experiencing. So the problem is that doctors have a really hard time tracing all of these symptoms back to the causative bacteria. So they put me on a round of antibiotics and then another one, just stronger and stronger antibiotics until my immune system was getting weaker and weaker. And then finally, my endocrine system crashed, and my testosterone plummeted to what the doctor said was that of a 12-year-old girl. Not exactly where I wanted to be at age 25. <laughs> at this time, I'm thinking to myself, I'm on a cocktail of different drugs. I was taking 60 pills a day. I had arthritis that had gotten so bad, I couldn't even open my own door. And now I have to deal with the very real prospect of what might be permanent damage. Onward and downward this went, <laughs> year after year, until 2010. By this point, I'm on intravenous antibiotics, immune modulators, and tethered to an oxygen tank. I'd lost 40 pounds of lean body mass and become too weak to walk. I'm laying here on the couch with this catheter stitched into my upper arm and inserted in my heart, and I have a realization. <laughs> Unless something changes, this will be my life. And I started to panic. And I mean real panic, like every possible negative thought entering my mind at one time. I start hyperventilating, but I'm somehow able to get a grip on myself just long enough to take one deep breath. That breath became my anchor. Every morning from that point forth, I figured that if I could do nothing else, and there wasn't much I could do, that I resolved to start each day with one deep breath. And soon that breath evolved into a meditation practice, and then went on to include some very small stretches. 
But the point is that every morning, the first thing I would do is I'd wake up and I would visualize in my mind's eye taking these breaths, doing this meditation, going through the motions of this stretch, and then I would wake up and the very first thing, I would do it exactly as it played out in my mind's eye. And it made me feel a little bit more hopeful that I could gain some measure of control over a situation that just otherwise seemed completely hopeless. The thing is, it also made me feel physically better. So I turned to some research to find out why. And I learned about the science of small wins. And I also learned that doctors and scientists had actually figured out how thoughts in the brain can lead to physiological changes and even structural changes in the body. So then I started paying really close attention to my thoughts, which at the time were still mostly negative. <laughs> and then I remembered the first rule of defensive driving, which is never look at what you're trying to avoid. I took that very seriously and very literally, and I replaced all of the medical journals in my room with surf magazines. I replaced my IV pole and my oxygen tank with my favorite surfboard and my travel gear. This one evening, I was watching Survivor Man, this show on TV, and I noticed that you could actually buy his pants. So I found myself going online, and I <laughs> ordered Survivor Man's pants. And when they came in the mail, I put them on the back of my couch right next to my wetsuit and all this other travel gear. And every time that I caught a glimpse of this scene <laughs> that I had created for myself, it felt like it was somehow entering my subconscious and reminding me of what I was moving toward keeping me inspired in some way to move forward. An interesting thing happens when you let go of the things that no longer serve you. It's as if, by magic, you kind of make room for new things in your life that can. And you also make new discoveries of things that may have always been there, but just hiding in plain sight. I embraced a new paradigm of alternative medicine and I learned that the body is a highly adaptive self-healing system, meaning that our natural state is actually to be healthy and that we'll return to that state whenever the right conditions permit. I also learned, as I started to pursue some of these alternative treatments and speak with more and more people, that all too often in medicine and in science, we get so focused on finding that fundamental particle, in this case, the fundamental pathogen that we think is responsible for the entire dysfunction. All the while, we forget to take a step back and see the fundamental pattern that makes up our whole lives. So the new thinking within this paradigm became if we can integrate all aspects of ourselves, if we can treat ourselves as a whole, integrate medicine with nutrition, with lifestyle changes, then maybe, just maybe, it's possible to repattern what was once a vicious cycle destined for disease into a virtuous circle that's now designed for health. After three years of searching and another year and a half of combined integrative therapies, in addition with these small changes I was making every day, I returned for clinical testing, at which point they found no Lyme disease, they found no brain lesions, they found no co-infections, they found that every organ and system in my body had in fact completely reorganized itself and normalized its natural function. In addition to this, they also found that my testosterone came soaring back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thrilled, obviously, with these clean bill of health and this new results, I did the most manly thing I could possibly think of to celebrate my return to life. I spent a week in survival school in the wilds of southern Utah. And it was fantastic, no tent, no sleeping bag, just the opportunity to connect with nature and everything that I had missed for so long. And it also gave me the opportunity to finally wear those Survivor Man pants. <laughs> still getting stronger and still taking these small steps every day, just this past summer, I finally completed my 10-year goal of making that 18-mile crossing from Montauk to Block Island. And next year, I'll be paddling twice that distance from Oahu to Molokai. Not long ago, I actually ran into one of the first doctors who had seen me at my very lowest point. And now he saw me looking relatively healthy. And he asked me, what did it? What medicine did you take? What was that supplement? He was searching for the one particle, that one thing that we think makes all the difference. I wanted to tell him it was everything. I wanted to tell him how 
everything we do, from all the medicines we take, to the foods we eat, to the thoughts we think, are all like one particle, but these particles come together to form a pattern, and the pattern, as a collective of small changes, is the thing that did it. And then I thought about it, and I said, eh, you know, this seems really complicated. So I traced it back in my mind to what started this whole journey, and I realized that actually, it's simple. And I told him it was one deep breath. Thank you.